Welcome folks. Today I was going to be showing you a little bit about uh, the pickup coil and how to measure it. It's inside a, uh, a high a General Motors rather, a General Motors uh, high energy ignition coil and this is what you'll find down underneath the rotor once you take the distributor cap and uh, the rotor off the top of your uh, high energy ignition uh, distributor in your typical General Motors product. Uh, before I go any further, I remember reading years ago that uh, perhaps Buick, Olds, Oldsmobile and Pontiac might have somewhere in, in this electrical region uh, reverse polarity compared to what this one's out of. It's out of a Chevy, a late Chevy, uh, 70's uh, 350 cubic inch engine uh, with the, the high energy ignition coil in it. And this is where it all starts. Um, I just have the ignition module here today just to show you where it hooks up. Once you take the distributor cap off, you'll, you'll generally find this same kind of a layout here. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this just to show you um, how, it, how it actually works and comes apart there. Show you in the different pieces of that sandwich, so to speak. Um, you can't go wrong here in hooking it up. You can't put this connector on the other side because these spade terminals on either side are different. Uh, on this side here, where the other wiring harness connects, there's two uh, full-size uh, spade clips. And on this side, there's a big one and a little one. So the big one and the little one can only connect to this connector. So it's a fail-safe thing where you can't hook it up the wrong way. Okay, I'm just going to remove this from the frame of the video and uh, get on with it. Okay, there's your general uh, pickup view of your pickup coil, rather, as from the top. Uh, what I'll do is I'll hold it up a little closer to the, um, the camera lens here to show you what it looks like on the side. Well, there it is from the front anyway. I'll try to angle it to give you a better view with the lighting. Um, you can't really go wrong here. These... Uh, I got them pre-loosened, these three screws that hold this so-called sandwich together. Uh, they're not equally spaced. These two are closer together than these two and these two. Okay, so there's no problem getting that uh, put back together the same way if you ever happen to take it apart. Uh, I believe when I ordered this up, it came as a unit. It was around $50 many years ago. I had to replace it in one of the vehicles. And I believe they called it a pole piece when you order it. Um, you can check that. Uh, maybe you've already gone through that. But anyways, uh, just show you a few little things on it before we continue. This little arm sticking out here is where the advance, uh, vacuum advance canister on the outside of the distributor connects its rod to in order to actuate this thing. You see in here, I'll just put my pinky up through there, pinky finger. And that's where your distributor shaft sits right in the middle and towards you on the screen you'll have your, uh, your rotor and your distributor cap obviously. So when you're at idle, I'm not sure which direction this is rotating, I'm just winging it here. So. Uh, Pinky's the shaft, distributor shaft, and it's spinning around at idle. Say you're here, and you're just, you just know, vacuum advances uh, at zero. Usually, there's not much vacuum at idle, and then as soon as you accelerate up to a medium cruising speed, roughly, that'll start to advance in. This will pull it in one direction or the other for advance. And what happens is there's uh, being a V8, there's uh, these little eight triangles on top. And also on, I believe on the distributor shaft, there's a, a matching set of little triangular contacts. Well, not contacts, because there's a bit of an airspace as it travels in between there. But on the distributor shaft, there's one that sits down in there with the matching number. And every time that all eight line up, it sends a pulse from the, uh, the pickup coil. I guess that's what they call it. GM called it anyway. And it sends the, uh, the signal into that uh, ignition module, triggering... Um, when to turn uh, the coil on and off, so to speak. Um, so that's basically how it works. This thing does pivot slightly a few degrees around the shaft that's spinning around the middle that takes the, the rotor on there and uh, provides the, uh, the spark to the various terminals inside the distributor cap to send them on their way to the, the spark plugs via the um, spark plug wires. So okay, let's get on with it now. Like I'd mentioned, there's a sandwich there of parts called a pole piece as a unit. And uh, these three screws have been um, pre-loosened. There's a magnet holding this thing together. I don't even really need the screws there. But just to show you how to get it apart. Okay, I'll just lay it down on the bench and steady it up a bit. We'll just toss our, uh, our screws off to the side so they don't get lost. And out of the way of the video that we're making here. Okay, so let's take it apart from the side. There's uh, four pieces here, believe it or not. The top piece, um, it's got these triangular um, I guess it's steel or iron. It's a pretty strong magnet in between them and it's a four piece unit. The coil is actually the fourth piece but you take this off of there, there's this piece here. I'd almost call that the pole piece because it's got a bunch of poles on it. But you can 
call it whatever the proper name is. And I'll just sort of like uh, put these off to the side as we go. And the next thing to come off of there is this magnet. It almost looks like that same material that you have on a fridge magnet. It's got that kind of a, a dark chocolatey brown color. And um, just to prove to you that it's a magnet, oh, we've got to get in the frame here. I've got a washer here. Just your standard uh, flat washer. I'll even put it on the bench down here. And as you can see, I just put that on there, and there's your, your washer. That proves that's a magnet. Okay. Let's see, do it once again. That's the magnet. All right. So get that out of the way now. So there's the magnet. And that, uh, then you've got this housing bit here that fits down inside your distributor housing. Um, the distributor housing, the metal part of your distributor is actually just above this thing here. And your cap will be on top of here with the rotor inside it. All right, so the coil. Once you get those other pieces out of the way, you can actually pick the uh, the pickup coil out of this little uh, stamp metal housing here. It actuates the advance and holds the whole thing together. All right, so we'll just get that out of the way for the time being. So here's your actual pickup coil. And the reason that I changed this one out to a new one is uh, when I got it apart, I decided, well, I was having some ignition, so-called ignition problems, and uh, I was trying to track down what it was and I noticed all this insulating goop material, whatever they had, might even been some tape, got all dried out I guess from the uh, over the years and the heat that was generated being sitting you know, on top of a hot V8 engine. Um, so I decided to replace it. Although it uh, it still looks good, the windings there, they're, they're like a pretty fine wire, more than likely copper with sort of a green lacquer kind of a an insulating kind of a, a coating on it and there's many many turns of wire on this, uh, I guess uh, if it's a sewing machine you'd call this a bobbin, okay? So I'd, I'd almost call that a bobbin that it's wound onto there. And underneath on the bottom there, there's where the wires actually go from the connector. There's sort of a beige or off-white colored one connects to this end wire off of the coil. And there's also this green one here, same thing over here, and it connects to the other um, end of that uh, coil of wire there. So that's all it is, is a many turns of wire Right? Many turns of wire on there and each end is connect where they, where they terminate and come out, get soldered onto these tabs and onto the, the wires uh, that go onto the connector here. Okay, so enough of what it looks like and what it, or how it functions. Now I'm going to get on with the actual test with an ohmmeter. So we've got our coil there and we can actually get rid of this stuff here now. And I'll bring the multimeter into the, uh, the frame here and we'll see what we got. All right. So, um, memory serves me right, uh, these, uh, testing the coil, by the way, you can test this while it's in the distributor, if I hadn't already mentioned that, you'll have the distributor housing out of here, naturally you're going to have your distributor cap and your rotor off of there, but you can usually, um, I'll bring this back in here now, you can usually just uh, disconnect this, and then uh, put your probes on this connector where the two metal uh, contacts are inside that, right? So either way you do it, it should come out the same. Um, I've got this one out now so you can see exactly what a pickup coil for the, the high energy ignition uh, distributor looks like. So there's what it looks like, just the coil by itself with this connector. Alright, so let's connect this thing up and we'll see what kind of a reading we get. So these probes actually go in here, at least for me they do. Give them a good scrape in there and make sure it's making a good connection because if you don't get a good connection with the, any kind of a, an ohmmeter or whatever it can mess up your readings or be intermittent. Okay, so now the readings for this coil, when you hook it up the way I have here, should be between uh, 500 ohms and 1000, 500 ohms, or 500 ohms to 1500 ohms if you want to say it that way. So I'll put it onto the 2K um, setting on the dial in this meter, which is the limit of 2000 ohms, because 1500 is just below the, the uh, 2000 ohms that we're we've got on the meter here, so we'll just bring it down there and see what we get. You can see it's kind of moving around, so that tells me that there's uh, either a bad connection or something wrong with the, the pickup coil itself, so I'll just I'll just scrape these contacts in here to make sure that they're doing their job and see if that reading stabilizes. Alright, so there we go, there's our, uh, our pickup coil and it's reading. Actually I'll bring this down a little bit. Hopefully that will show up on the video alright. So I'm, I'm showing decimal 816. Now we have to remember that's not uh, 
like 0.8 of, of something unless you're talking in the thousands range because we're on the, the 2000 ohm uh, see we're on the, the 2000 or 2k um, ohms reading so that should read in thousands up there so if my elementary math proves uh, correct we should move these this decimal over three places to the right because we've got the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands column. Okay, so 0.8 of a thousand is 800 and something, right? So we got 815 ohms. Just regard the decimal and just read it the way it is. The decimal should should be over here if you're talking in hundreds of ohms. Okay, did I say that right? I hope so. So, anyways, this one tests good. Like I was saying, the range that this should test in should be between 500 ohms and 1,500 ohms, or 1,500 ohms if you prefer to say it that way. Okay, so there's a further test here. You, you think that's the end of it? Well, I wouldn't end there. Any books I've read in the past have always said to give the wires a wiggle while they're connected to the, uh, the test meter. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll just stabilize this coil here, and see in case there's a uh, problem, rather, not a trouble, a problem with, the, say, a, a broken wire that's inside that insulation there, or one of the connectors is faulty with its crimping or what have you. Um, this this will, will help you out a little bit more in, in detecting if there's a problem. See, the coil itself could be okay, but the coil's connections have to make its way all the way to this connector. So what I'm going to do is take um, and move these uh, the wires that connect to the pickup coil. Get in the frame a little bit better. Still watch our reading. And make sure the reading doesn't move. It should stay stationary at that number. So you want to twist and bend the wires. Well, don't go crazy on it, but just, just a little bit here and there. Give it a little twist and watch your uh, your readings if you're using an ohmmeter test. See, it's staying solid there, so that tells me here that the wiring and the coil are functional. Okay, according to the test it is. But like I was saying, when you get down to um, the actual thing, you might not even see this. I'm going from memory here. This is quite a few years ago. And I was trying to find the problem, so I... I pulled the distributor out of the uh, the engine, removed the uh, the drive gear on the end with the roll pin that uh, it, it uh, is secured to on the shaft, uh, goes right through the uh, the gear and the uh, distributor uh, shaft itself. And that's what you have to do. You have to remove the distributor and take the gear off, and then you can pull the um, distributor shaft out, and you can get at this stuff. Okay, but like I say, this one is getting kind of cooked and baked over the years because of the heat generated from the engine, not to mention age and whatever else is going on in there that's in a place where it doesn't get a whole, whole lot of cooling. I mean it's inside a distributor cap with big sparks flying around and high voltage and the whole nine yards there. So that's the kind of abusive situation that it sits in. So you won't probably see this unless you get lucky enough to see it down on an angle here but I happened to pull this one out and it was all falling apart so just to be safe and rather than get stranded on the road in the middle of nowhere I decided to replace the whole thing. Uh, I don't know if you can buy the pickup coil separately, perhaps you can, but as far as I recall, this all came together as a, a unit, called a sandwich if you will, and once you um, put those all back together, this one probably will function, but I, I wouldn't trust it too long now with all that going along. I guess I could, uh, you know, put something, maybe some silicone around those wires again and reuse it, but uh, like I say, I don't really like getting stuck out in the middle of nowhere and, you know, so since I had it apart for the $50 or whatever it was back in, in the day, I just decided to change the whole thing. Like I say, I believe um, the parts guy called it a pull piece, if I'm not mistaken. So there you have it. There's what they look like when you um, you take them out of the distributor and disassemble them. And mustn't forget our three screws. I'll even throw those into the video for good measure. So there's the, the complete unit of the so-called pull piece. Hope you enjoyed the video, folks. Take care, have yourself a nice day, and uh, bye for now.